Let's go ahead and work on the edit now. So we can open the model. We just have to preload it with the edit user information. And then we're going to add an action listener on this button so that we can save or update this user whenever they click on save. So let's go back to the application. And the edit is going to be very similar to the ad. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this. I'm going to close this for now and then go down and paste it. I'm just going to call it on update employee. And this is going to take an employee. And that's not going to be a form. That's going to be the actual employee. And I don't need to close the model. So I'm just going to delete this because if the user don't want to edit the employee anymore, they can just close it themselves. And then here, I'm just going to pass in the employee. And instead of add employee, I'm just going to call update employee. And everything else is going to be the same. So now we can use this function in the form in the model so that we can call this function right here whenever they click on the button. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, go back to the template. So this is the update modal. So I'm just going to collapse it for now. And then I'm going to go into the edit modal. And here's the form. So what I want to happen is I want that when they click this button to save the changes, I want to call this function um, that I just created. So let's go back here and in here, I'm just going to add a click listener on this button. So here I'm just going to do click and set it equal to our function. And now we have to pass in the employee here. Okay. So how, where are we going to get this employee? So it's going to be pretty simple. So we're just going to bind an employee from the template to an employee on the form or the same employee, but we're just binding it to the employee that we're going to have on the form. And then we can pass that employee whenever they click on the button to open the model. So let's go up here and let's define this employee here. So we're going to do public. Again, you don't have to define public. If you just don't have any access modifier, it's going to be public by default. So I'm just going to do edit employee and that's going to be of type employee. So that's going to represent the whatever employee that they're editing. It can be any one of the employee. And then I'm going to take this employee and then go down here. So whenever they click on edit, I want to set this employee, right? So I'm just going to say this, that edit employee, which is the employee in this class, which is what this means, meaning the employee in this class, we're going to set it equal to this employee right here. So whatever employee that we get, whenever we're looping, whenever they click on the button to open the model, we're going to pass that employee here. And then we set it to this employee in this class. So now we can use this employee in this class to bind it to this form right here. I'm just going to go up tab and then I'm going to give a reference to this form. So I'm going to go in the form tag and then I'm going to do hash and I'm just going to call it edit form and then set it equal to ng form like we did last time. So now we have a reference to this entire form. So we can use that reference in this method and then pass in the value. Remember the value is a JSON representation of the actual uh, input. So now this is going to be exactly like an actual employee because we're going to bind every input in this form to the employee that we define up here, this employee right here. So let's go back. I'm just going to copy this. So to do this binding, we're just going to set an ng model equal to this employee for whatever attribute. So here for the name, I'm just going to do ng model and then set that equal to the employee. So double curly braces and then pass in the employee in the class. Make sure this employee exists and then we can bind it to the name. So now this input is going to be bind to this employee in the class for this name input here. And we're going to do this for every single one of the attribute on the employee itself. So those two that are hidden uh, on line 102 and 103, that's because I have to place the ID in the employee code and I don't want to update those. Now, the reason I don't want to update the employee code is because we're just not updating the employee code. We want that when the code is set, that's the employee code for the user um, forever. 
But for the ID, the reason we have to pass in the ID because we want to represent the whole object of the actual employee. Otherwise, if we send it without an ID in the back end, or if we didn't have this, um, it would just do an ad. Uh, Hibernate would be like, oh, this is a new user because there's no ID, there's no existing ID. So Hibernate it will be confused and we just do an ad instead of an update. So we have to pass in this ID here so that Hibernate can know that this is an update and not an ad. So right here, we can pass in the ID. And then here, we're gonna pass in the employee code. And then here, we're gonna pass in the email. Job title. And down here, we're gonna pass in the phone. And then here we pass in the image URL. So if you pay close attention to this, you can see that this is just another way of using a form and send value to the backend. And it's pretty much the same thing we're doing here. But the only difference is here we pass in the entire form. But in the add function, we reach out for the value. As you can see here, we get the value, which is the representation, a JSON representation of the actual employee itself. So from the form, if you get the value from that form, it will give you just the input as a name value tag in JSON format. So we're pretty much doing the same thing here. So down here, the difference is we're passing it to this function. We pass in the form and the value, which is represented as an employee because that's what we're doing here for every single one of those inputs, which is why it was important for us to put in the the ID and the employee code because we want to represent the whole employee and then we're hiding those because we don't want the user to update this information, the ID and the employee code, but they will be there in the form itself so that whenever we get the value on this form, it will be represented as the full employee object itself. So just to recap, to understand what's happening here, because this might be a little bit confusing. So if we go into the app component, right? So let me scroll up a little bit. So here we define this edit employee, right? This edit employee is defined in this class, right? And what we're doing is we're binding this edit employee, whatever it is, either if it's empty or whatever the case might be, we're binding it to this form, right? So you can see we do ng model and then we're binding every attribute on this edit employee to an input on this form, right? And then we give this form a reference here. So with this reference, we can access the value down here, which is gonna be a JSON representation of every single one of those input, which is gonna be the actual employee. Now, how do we set this employee? Because we have a lot of employee here. So what we do here is every time you click this button, we pass this employee in. So if we go back to the code, whenever they click to edit, we're gonna call this function down below on open modal to open the modal. So whenever it's an edit, we're gonna say, hey, this employee on this class, which is binding in the form right here, make it the employee that they click on. Because you remember, there's gonna be an iteration for every single one of those employees. So whenever they click on open modal, they're gonna pass in the employee for the actual iteration. So this employee will always be set whenever they try to open the edit model. So they open the edit model, this edit employee gets set, and then we binding this edit employee to the form. So then we have access to this value, which represents a JSON format of that employee, which is the actual employee. So whenever they click on save, then we can pass in this here. And the reason we're adding those two um, input as hidden, we still have to have them on that form right here is because we want to show every single one of those attributes on that specific employee because if we don't, then our object will not be complete. So we have to put in all of the attribute for an employee, which is the ID, code, email, job title, phone, and image URL. So now when we call the ID on this, we can have a full complete object. So now we should be able to test this. So let me go back to the browser. So if I do, I'm just gonna copy this image and see if I can update the image. So if I do edit, as you can see, this user is loaded. So now I can change the image URL save it and you can see now it refreshes so we can also change everything else so if i pass in the let's say the email is john at email.com and let's say they have a new number some random number save you can see it changes right here so we can debug this a little bit just so you can see what's happening here 
So I'm going to go to source. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see. And I'm going to go to webpack, the dat folder, the source, and into the app folder. And we want to go into the app component.ts. And I'm going to collapse this back. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So when we click on this edit, right, this method gets called open modal. And it's going to go into this and it's going to set this edit employee. So we can check it out. Put a breakpoint here, click on edit, and it stops here. Step over, step over, step over, step over. Now it goes into, it's going to go into this if statement. You can see now it's going to set this edit employee as the employee in the current iteration, which is this employee that we click on. So now this edit employee is set as you can see here. And we can finish this. So now this edit employee model is up and we can see we load this user that they click on. How did this happen? It's because we set this employee to the employee that they click on. Now, whenever they click save, we're going to call this an update employee. So now if I click save and we look at this employee, you can see it's a JSON representation or key value. Well, we don't have the curly braces and everything, all the little double quotes, but it's a JSON representation of the employee itself with all of the information. And that's why we have the ID, we have the user code. We don't have them here because they're they're hidden. This input are hidden, but we need to have them so that we can send it to the back end so that the back end is not confused. Say, oh, this is an existing employee because they have an ID. So Hibernate and the back end will understand that and do an update instead of an add. So that's how this whole thing works. Now that's just one way to do this. You could do the same thing that I did with the um, add employee, you could pass in the whole form, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to finish this and you can see, well, I didn't do any changes, but let's say this guy is SQL and UI and save. Okay. I'm going to remove this breakpoint and finish this. You can see it's updated. So let's go back here. There's a couple of things I want to do. So in the app component, um, what I want to do here is want to clear this form, right? So if I add an employee here, I'm going to add some random guy here and close this for now and click save. Okay. This guy's added. If I try to add another one, you can see the form is still has the old guide or the old employee that I just added. So I want to clear this and there's a very handy function that you can call on the form. So let's go back to the app and here after we loaded all the employee we can clear the form so we can call the form and then call the method on it and this method is reset so we're gonna do that and we're gonna do that either if it's successful or not successful so that we can clear the form so let's let, let that rebuild so now if we add someone again some random guy save click on the form again you can see now it's empty so the last thing we have to do is to work on this delete so as you can see we can have the model come up we just have to put an event listener on that yes and then confirm the deletion of this employee so we're going to do that in the next lecture